Um, and now we are live. Welcome to all those joining us uh, through the recording. My name is Murray. Uh, I am the co-president of the Game Design and Development Club at the University of Toronto. And today we're doing our intro session to Unity and some of the basics of the interface and just getting started with game objects and scripting and, and how it all works. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen here. Here we go. Yep. OK, so is, that, is everyone able to see that? This is just my Discord right now. Sorry. Here we go. Um, cool. So the first thing we're going to look at is how to open Unity and start a new project. So this might be this might be like familiar for some of you guys. I mean, um, if you've already used Unity before, we're going to go over it just in case um, anybody's completely new. So once you've downloaded Unity, when you open it up, uh, you should see something called Unity Hub like this, right? Um, and what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new project and then import an existing package in, of assets into that project and look how, and see how that looks. So to download the assets that we're going to import, um, you should have been directed to this page earlier through the required software. Um, and this is where you're going to download the package of assets. If you don't have these already, um, I'll send the link in the chat uh, just really quickly to make sure everyone's on the same page. How do I do that? <laughs> I'm such a boomer. Um, where is the chat? That's so weird. It changes the whole interface when you're recording. Um, I'm keeping tabs on the Zoom chat, so. Okay. Uh, oh, there we go. That's weird, it just popped up. Okay, so there's the link in case you don't have it yet. You're gonna go to that link and uh, click under materials, prototype one, direct download.zip. So you're gonna download that package. And once you've got it, um, you can put it into a folder like this one and it's a .zip file. So you're gonna have to extract it, right? So you're gonna hit right click uh, and hit extract files. I think most operating systems have some kind of zip extracting thing, so it shouldn't be too much of a hitch, but if you're having trouble with it, speak up and we can help you out. Um, so once you've extracted that, you should get this new folder called prototype one dash direct download or whatever your zip file is named. You can click on that uh, and then you can go into, uh, ignore the Mac OS part, that's just for Unity, but you can go into here um, and you can click on prototype ones or don't click on it, but you'll, you'll see it and you'll, you'll see that you have this file now. So this is what we're gonna use to get our assets into Unity. So we're gonna to go to Unity and we're gonna click new and it should load up. And then we're gonna click, click 3D and you're gonna give your Unity project a name. So I'll call it like my game, right? Uh, and then you're gonna hit create. This is gonna take a second or two because when you create a new project, Unity has to initialize it and open all of the packages and assets and stuff uh, for the default engine. Um, and so usually it'll take a couple seconds, but that's okay. Um, if anyone's still doing this, uh, we're, we're going to give it a second. It'll load up on my machine and then, uh, we'll see if, if anyone's having any, any issues with that. Um, so once we get this loaded in, uh, we're going to see, I guess while I'll go, while we're waiting, I'll go over a quick overview of like what we're doing today. Um, and, uh, and we can get a sense of, of what is going on. So after this loads up, we're going to talk about the interface what all the different tabs are, uh, how they relate, and, uh, and how to work with them. And then we're gonna talk about making custom layouts, arranging your own Unity interface, and, uh, and making an interface that works for you, and then saving it. And then we're gonna move into um, some of the basics of the viewport, the camera, running your game, things like that. Uh, and then we'll create some game objects, and we'll start doing some scripting. So, and don't worry if, if uh, any of the words I'm using are unfamiliar, um, feel free to speak up and ask me. Um, this stuff is, is a lot to grasp all at once, I think, when you're just starting out. So um, don't be scared to ask questions if it doesn't make sense. Because it doesn't make sense. Like when anybody's starting out with this stuff, it doesn't make sense. Like, I don't know. That's the thing that I think people forget about game development is you can't just be very good at it instantly. Like it's always a learning process. <laughs> So this is taking a lot longer than I thought it would. But while we're waiting, um, 
Does anybody have any fun facts to share just in general? Uh, there was a brief period of time where the Pepsi company was the sixth largest Navy in the world. Like Navy, like boats? Yep. Why? Why did they have that many boats? Okay, so they struck a deal with, I believe at the time it would have been the Soviet Union uh, in order to get Pepsi as like the dominant like foreign soda in the company. But at the time, the Russian currency wasn't really worth much, so they negotiated to get paid in something else instead. Originally, it was vodka, but they eventually renegotiated the deal and got paid in warships. Now, they scrapped the warships for actual money because what use does Pepsi have for a Navy? Uh, but before they scrapped the ships, the number of ships that they had technically made them the sixth largest Navy in the world. That's super weird. That's like actually really strange. Sixth largest Navy, Navy was, a, was a soda company. Thank you for sharing that fact. I think that kept us entertained while we were waiting. Okay, so now that we're done uh, loading in the Unity editor, um, there's a lot of different windows here and I'm going to try to go over a brief overview, uh, overview of what each of these does and why we use them. So the first one that I want to talk about is the hierarchy. So Unity uses something, uh, uh, um, Unity's architecture is an entity component system, which means that it all things in your game are going to be called entities. They're, well, the, Unity calls them game objects, but they're essentially just like empty shells that um, can store inside them different components which define how they work. Um, so for example, uh, if I go into my sample scene here, we, we have two game objects. We've got the main camera and we've got the directional light. So let's go over that. First, the sample scene is what we call a scene. In Unity, scenes are different collections of game objects and scripts and all of that that we load in and uh, we can switch between them at different times in order to uh, get different environments going in our game. For example, one level could be one scene. And then when you beat that level and move to the next one in your game, that could be a different scene. Uh, this allows us to easily like load in different modularized like uh, areas that we can work in and, and develop individually. So when you create Unity, it makes a sample scene for you, which is just like your default scene. The simplest thing you can have, as you can see from our viewport here, there's nothing in the scene at first sight, but it actually turns out there's two game objects that Unity starts you out with. The first one is called the camera. So this one's called main camera. Um, and the camera defines what is seen by the, the uh, player when they click play on our game, right? So you'll notice when I, when I click the camera um, in the viewport here, it shows me some arrows and a bunch of lines. So let's move over to those and figure out what they do. So in the viewport, um, the way that I like to, there's a lot of different ways to move around the viewport, but I think the way that's easiest is um, to go over it right here, hover your mouse over and then right click. And then you'll see a little eye pops up and now you can move your mouse to look around, right? And while you're doing this, you can actually hit W to move forward, S to move backwards, a to move left and right to move, uh, D to move right. So it essentially controls like a first person shooter if you've ever played one of those, but you can move around your view space and see what all your game objects are. Now this isn't our game yet. This is just the scene that lays out and defines what our game can be. And we'll talk about that a bit more after we talk about the, the, the basics of these game objects. So when you click on the camera, it shows you these lines and these lines are what is seen by the camera. Anything within these lines will be in the camera's vision when we play the game. Um, it also gives us these three little lines right over here, these red, green, and blue lines that we can use to change the position of the camera, right? We can move it this way, or we can move it this way, we can move it this way, right? This is true of many game objects. Uh, a lot of them have transform components, which are, remember, like I said earlier, components are things that we attach to game objects to control how they work. So a transform component can be attached to most game objects to move it around your scene, give it a position, a rotation, and a scale. So on the topic of that, right, 
let's move on to, uh, so we, we can move our game object via its position using these arrows. And in fact, that's actually using one of our main uh, tools for moving game objects around, of which we have three. So if you want to change tools, you can go up here to the top. You'll see you have a, six different buttons, right? There's this hand, these arrows, these sort of twisty arrows, this box. Um, for now, we're going to focus on these three, right? This is called the move tool, these four arrows. This one's called the rotate tool, and this one's called the scale tool. And these tools give you access to change your uh, game object's position just by modifying it in the viewport, like I've been doing, right? Moving it like this, or if I click rotate, then I can rotate the game object, right? And then you'll see the camera's view goes up or down and rotates around an axis, and I can scale it. Well, that really doesn't do anything for a camera, but we'll see later what that does with um, more 3D objects that aren't just points in space. So if you want to ever undo any of these changes, you can use the standard undo key map, which is control Z or command Z on Mac, uh, or you can go to file or sorry, or you can go to edit and then undo, right? This top one. So let's undo those. So are there any questions about um, so far the hierarchy and the scene tab? and what tools we have for manipulating them. Everyone following along? Making sense so far? Cool. Now questions means we understand. That's good. OK, so um, on, uh, these, these are our game objects, and they're all stored in the hierarchy, right? We can manipulate them using the scene. But what if we want to change something about our game object? Well, like I mentioned earlier, we've got to go into the components. And where we find the components is on this tab on the right, right? It's called the inspector. The inspector allows us to go in detail on each game object and change the properties of it, which are defined by the components that that game object has. Looks like we've got a question here. It was just me. Sorry, I keep going. OK, no worries. I can't see the chat. So um, Michael, do you want to interrupt me if there's a question? Uh, I will, don't worry. Cool, thanks. So if we go into the inspector on the right, we can change the properties of our game object. So um, all the components are listed here, right? So we've got the first one's a transform component, which I talked about, defines the position, rotation, and scale of that object in the world space. This camera also has a camera component, which defines sort of the camera properties of, uh, well, the camera. So I can change things like the field of view to make it wider or shorter. And I can um, change the depth of the camera, right? And I can I can show, I can change like depth perception and things like that. It's imagine if you had a real life camera and you were adjusting the settings on it. That's what this component does in particular. Um, there are many other components though that help us uh, define specific behavior of our game objects. And later we'll talk about scripting and defining our own custom behavior and our own custom components, you could you could say. So um, that's the inspector tab. Now let's talk about this one down here, this big one. This is the project tab, and it basically acts like a file explorer or um, finder on Mac uh, just inside the Unity editor. So it only shows you the things you need, but it mimics your actual directory of your project. So if I right click the assets folder here in the project window, and I go to show in Explorer, I think on Mac, it'll, it'll be called show in Finder. Then it'll take me to my actual location of the game files in my computer on my disk. So uh, as you can see, there's a lot of things here that it just doesn't show you because it simplifies the interface. So everything you need should be here. And in fact, this assets folder should be storing most of the things we need to create our game. Um, so We'll see that once we import our package, that the assets folder is very useful for importing things and dragging them in, um, and it's it's good for that. OK, uh, let's move on. What other? Oh, yeah, this is the last one I wanted to talk about. So once we, uh, once we have created something of a game and we want to see how it looks during development, Unity has a really quick um, iterative editor that lets us play the game um, really, really quickly while we're while we're editing it. So all you have to do to do that is you're going to go up to this little play button here, and you're going to click on it. And what that does is it 
switches. Well, this one will switch your, uh, your scene to instead be the game window, as you'll see up here. And now it shows us what the camera sees. But this game's pretty boring, right? Like you can't play this, you can't move around, my keys don't do anything. Um, we need to add more behavior to make our game interactable and fun. So, oh, I'm screwing up here. Here we go. Um, but before we do that, I just want to I just want to do one last um, bit about the layout and saving layouts and uh, and creating custom layouts. So let's say, um, well, I don't know. I don't like where the scene uh, tab is. I want to move it down here so that I have it alongside my project tab. Uh, and let's say, oh, I want to put the hierarchy behind the inspector, right? So I have a lot more room to, to look at my game. All you have to do is drag your windows and they'll click on right where you need them. Now, if I want to save this layout and come back to it later, later, all I have to do is go up here to window, layouts, oh, layouts, and then save layout. And then you give it a name. So I'm going to call this one my layout. And then you hit enter. And if I want to go back and restore it, right? So let's say I mess it up. I move some stuff around. Uh, and now I want to go back and restore it. All I have to do is go window, layouts, and then click on the one I just created called my layout. It'll reload, and that's exactly what you need to see. So keep in mind, because uh, pay attention to that bit, because um, that might be part of your homework assignment this week. So keep that in mind. You're going to go to window, layouts, and then save layout. And you can load it really easily by clicking on the one you made. So now we're back in the default editor. And um, it's. I, are there any questions? Sorry, before we move on, are there any questions about that whole process, what any of these windows do, uh, or how to make new layouts? Cool. Seems like everyone's following along. That's great. So now we want to make our game more interesting. And one of the best ways to do that is to import assets. Assets refer to anything your game uses, right? Usually people will talk about like art assets or music assets. Um, scripts are also kind of assets. I don't know where the, where the distinction is there, but usually people are referring to art, 3D models, um, sprites, things like that. Uh, and so one of, the, one of the ways to do that is to import a package and packages give us more access to other people's code or other people's projects. So we've downloaded a package earlier. I talked about it at the start of this session. We unzipped that in our file. So now let's open it. All we have to do to do that is go to assets, import package, custom package. And now we have to navigate to our folder, which mine is stored in prototype one direct download. And then it's called prototype one starter files .unity package. All you have to do is click that and click open. .unity package files are really easy ways to move around assets. So it's going to show you all of these assets we're going to import, and you're just going to click import. Might take a second, just loading everything in. Assets that can be imported this way also include scenes entirely, right? So if I wanted to, if I'm working on a game with someone else, and I want to send them one of the levels I made, all I have to do is wrap it up in a .unity package file and send it to them, and then they can import it via that. If you're interested in looking how to, in looking up how to um, export your own packages, uh, there's great documentation on that online, but we don't use that much, I don't think, so um, we won't go over it here. So now that we've imported the, uh, the assets, you'll notice that there is a new folder here called scenes. Well, uh, there's two There's two folders. One of them was there, one of them isn't, wasn't. Um, but if we open up the scenes folder, we'll notice that we have sample scene, which is the currently the one we're operating in, the one that Unity made for us. Yeah, I'm just jutting in here. We got a question in the chat. Sure, what's up? Um, he, uh, he said that he got import FBX warnings in the bottom right of his screen. Should he be worried? Uh, I wouldn't worry about those now. I have those as well. Um, and I think it's just a result of it's like different Unity versions, right? So this this package we're using is from 2013. Um, it still works. It just gives you warnings. Uh, so you should be fine. Um, no worries on there. Cool. Any other questions? All right. So let's um, let's move into 
talking about our scene. So we've got this new scene here that got imported with the package called prototype one. And if we want to open that, all we have to do is double click it. It's going to ask us if we want to save our changes. And um, I don't really particularly care about those little changes we made to moving around the camera. So I'm just going to hit don't save. But it'll always do that when you're trying to open up a new scene. So after you've done that, you should have something that looks kind of like this. Remember, we can right click to control the sample scene or, the, or we can right click to control the view with WASD controls. So you should have a road and these beautiful mountains in the background. Looks a lot better than what we had before. Um, so let's see what this scene comes with in terms of game objects. Remember, we find our game objects under the hierarchy tab in the Unity editor. So as always, we've got our main camera, just like before. We've also got our directional light, which provides lighting to the scene. Um, and then we've got this new one called environment. So if I click on that, then it's going to show me the lines that make up environment. But this is interesting because you'll notice like when we click on the other two, we see, you know, we can use our tools to modify it, right? Like if I go to the movement tool, it automatically shows um, how I can change the position of this using the tool inside the editor, right? Remember up here. Same with directional light, I can move that around and change how the lighting works. When I click on environment, it doesn't quite do that. This is because environment is actually a parent object to a bunch of other objects. And so usually we don't wanna move it around all at once, right? Sometimes, sorry, that's not true at all. Sometimes we do wanna do that, but here we, we probably don't, right? Anyway, it's not gonna show us um, the ability to move around the individual pieces of this road using the tool you'll notice that there's a bunch of lines separating each segment of the road here. And if we, if we click on this arrow here, um, it'll show us another variable or another game object within environment called road. And now when we click on road, there we go, right? That's what we wanted. We wanna be able to move the road around using the tools. So that's great. Now we can modify the position of our road, move it around as we please because road um, contains uh, just this one that we want and not other game objects. And actually you'll find that environment contains the mountains around us as well. So if I move that, it's moving the whole thing, right? Probably not what we wanted. Okay, um, so I hope that made sense. I was kind of confusing myself there, but um, basically game objects can be parented to other game objects. And when they are, their children follow the position changes that their parents do. So for example, all of these road segments are parented to road, right? Right, ground road is over there, ground road one is over there, ground road 14 is here. They're all parented to the road game object. And so when I move the road game object, all, this, all the segments move with it, right? That's the idea you wanna grasp here. If I wanna parent one object to another, all I have to do is drag it onto the other object in the editor. Right, and then if I wanna unparent it, I just drag it out. Awesome. Um, so let's talk about how to make new game objects. So we can do this really easily. There's a little plus button in the hierarchy which tracks all of our game objects. We just have to click that and it'll show us all the things we can make. So we can make an empty game object using create empty. Uh, we can make a 3D game object. We can make effects, lighting, audio, video, these weird things. Don't worry about these for now, just worry about 3D object because that's what we're gonna focus on to learn the fundamentals. So we can make a new 3D object and it gives us a couple simple options up top, cube, sphere, capsule, and cylinder. Let's do cube. So now that I've clicked cube, I've created this new cube that now just exists in our scene. But let's put it on the road so it makes sense. And it's like a little more focused in our, in our scene. So we're gonna move it over this way using our arrows, and then let's drag it down onto the road. Now, when we click on the camera, we can see our cube in the camera. I know that's a little hard to, hard to see, but just trust me that because the cube is inside the lines of the camera here, um, we can see it in, in the game. So, right, let's hit play and see what happens. Well, once you're finished there, we have questions. Sure. So once we hit play, um, cool. Now we can see our game. There's a road, there's a cube, but there's nothing interesting happening. Everything's staying still, right? It's a little boring. So how do we add 
interesting elements to our games that allow certain game objects to interact with other game objects. Because if you think about it, that's all the games are, right? When Mario jumps on an enemy's head, that's him interacting with the enemy, the enemy dying, Mario jumping off and, and going forward. And so that's just two enemies colliding, right? Um, and so we need to figure out how to provide that kind of behavior um, very, very abstractly to our game objects or else everything will stay still the whole time. Before we move forward with that, I'll, I'll do the question now. What was that? Yeah, um, it was, let's see, if they use Figma to design their game, is it possible to export the assets from Figma to Unity? I'm not actually familiar with Figma. Is that another game engine? Um, Figma is, let me, let me check here. Vector graphics editor and prototyping tool. Yeah, so, um, right, Unity, there, there are a certain number of file types that Unity accepts. Um, and I'm not sure if Figma is for 3D, 3D software or 2D software, but if you can export to common image types like PNG, JPEG, uh, bitmap, any of those, they'll work right into Unity. All you'd have to do is drag them in. Um, it gets a little complicated when we start talking about 2D elements in 3D games um, because they work differently. They're designed around Unity's 2D engine most of the time. Um, so you, there, there's certain ways you have to do it, but there's lots of great resources online um, about Unity 2D. Um, I'm not sure if Figma exports to those common image types, but if it does, uh, then all the power to you, go for it. Okay, um, so let's provide some interesting behavior to this new cube we've just made. So let's let's first look at it. What what entities or what components? Sorry, it, what components does this game object have? So let's click on it in the editor, and you'll see over here. Now we're we're interacting with this new game object we made called Cube. So over here in the inspector, this will show us all of the components that are attached to the cube. So first of all, we've got transform. That should look familiar, right? All of the other game objects we've looked at have transform. The camera has it, the light has it. Uh, and all that does is define that it, it tells Unity that this object exists in space and has a position, rotation, and scale, right? Each of which has three arguments, x, y, and z. Um, and those represent the axes as seen in the top corner of our window here to our game. So you can see there's an x there, a y, and a z. And they're always aligned with those axes as you move around and rotate your camera. Or rotate your, sorry, camera's not the right word. Rotate your viewport. We've got a couple other interesting components here. We've got these ones, which are mesh components. So we've got a mesh filter and a mesh renderer. Just on a very high level, these are um, components that tell the editor that this object should be visible. Um, and in specifically, they tell Unity um, where to find the vertices and the lines and the edges of each 3D model. So if I were to disable the mesh renderer, we'd find that our cube would disappear um, because no longer would it be visible uh, to the Unity editor. So that's what that one does. Don't worry about all of these effects. It can be really overwhelming when you're just starting out to get lost in all this stuff. But just as a word of advice, when people start out in Unity, they don't know what any of this stuff means. And you just learn it as you experience it and you go through it. Um, don't fiddle with this stuff until you do your research and, and figure out uh, what, you, what everything does. And then you'll be more informed as to what decisions you're making. Um, so now we've got this one, which is called a box collider. Uh, colliders are very important in game development because they define the uh, space that game objects take up. So a box collider, actually, um, we define it using our own set of vertices. Um, sorry, it's predefined when you create this object, but uh, it is defined using a bunch of vertices and edges, and it tells the compiler, or sorry, that's the wrong word as well. It tells the game where the object is located in space with respect to other objects in the game. And it's particularly useful when we're trying to program behavior into our objects because we'll see next week that you can use colliders to um, detect when two objects are 
bumping into each other or overlapping. And that's super useful because, um, you know, if I'm playing Mario and I jump onto an enemy, I want the game to register that I hit that enemy, right? Oftentimes, if you're familiar with game lingo, colliders are hitboxes, right? Um, so they define where the object's space is with respect to collisions. Now we've got this one thing at the bottom called default material. So this is just the material that the uh, object uses. And all a material is, is a, uh, a set of code that determines how that uh, game object interacts with light in the world space. Uh, so in this one, it's just white. Um, don't worry about this. This is really complex. One of the, one of the uh, hardest parts of learning game development is learning shader scripting. Uh, and so don't worry about that right now because um, that's an advanced topic. We also have a button at the bottom that says add component. So this is useful because if we want to define our own behavior, we'll need to add some components. Specifically, the one we're going to want to add is a script component. So we're going to click add component. We're going to go here and we're going to type in script. It's going to show us new script. So we're going to click that. Then we have to give our script a name. Sorry, I think the window's cutting off a bit. I tried to drag this up earlier in the test session, but it just doesn't work. But bear with me, you're not missing anything underneath the screen. Um, just look up script, click new script, and then give it a name. I'll call this one my script. Then I hit enter. Okay, well, it doesn't really seem to have done anything, but has it? We just need to give it a second to load in. We've made changes to one of our game objects. So we have to give um, the engine a, a minute or two to load it in. So now, we've see, now we see that I've created a new script called my script. Um, and that's cool, but where is it, right? Well, you can find your scripts in the ever important assets folder, right? It'll automatically create it here whenever you make a new script component. This now hands the reins to us to develop the behavior of the game object by ourselves, right? So how we're gonna do this is by editing the script. Let's open it up. I'm using Visual Studio Code to edit the scripts, but if you don't have that installed, you can open it up in any text editor and if you're having trouble opening it up through Unity, try opening up the same file through your text or through your file explorer or through uh, Finder on Mac, and then just opening it in a text editor, right? So like .txt editor or something, and it'll work. So here's the script. Uh, and Unity, when you create a script, is very nice because it lays out the framework of what your script could look like. Um, so Code is hard for a lot of people, especially if you're not familiar with the language. So don't get too boggled up by this stuff. What you need to understand are the fundamentals that Unity reads in. You don't really need to understand the language you're using, which is C Sharp. Uh, in fact, I've never learned C Sharp formally. I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but I know how to script using Unity because their interface is pretty simplified. So um, I'm going to go really quickly through these lines just to give you an understanding of what each is doing so we're not getting caught up in all the specific details. So these three tags um, bring in libraries for us to use. The important one is Unity Engine, which gives us the tools we need to interact with the Unity interface through the script. So here we declare a public class called MyScript. And we have this thing that says colon monobehavior. So in programming, a class is a collection of data, right? So all we're doing is defining this class, which stores a few operations that we want to use on our game objects. If that confused you, don't worry about it. Um, that will come with time once you learn to program as you gain experience with Unity or other programming languages. But just know for now that this is a class, it's a collection of data, and it's what we use to interact with Unity's interface, because this is essentially the component we're defining, right? Mono behavior is Unity's scripting system. So we declare our class to inherit mono behavior using this colon because it, uh, it is, and, and basically this is just telling the uh, Unity editor that this class we're making is a script, right? So that's the hardest part of this. The rest is pretty simple. We've got two functions, right? Uh, void start and void update. If you don't know what void is, don't worry about that either. It just means it doesn't return anything. Um, 
And if you don't know what a return statement is, uh, that's okay. Programming stuff, you'll learn it. So this is start and start, as it says, is called before the first frame update, right? In games, um, frames are, uh, we, we do everything in frames when we talk about video games because we can't have things move continuously with computers. So you've heard terms like 60 frames per second or 30 frames per second. And these are just the rates at which we run our games. Um, this means that 60 times, if we're running at 60 frames per second, that means that 60 times a second, we update everything that's happening internally with the game, with all the math, with the positions of everything and all that. We update the screen also accordingly. And so you see 60 different images per second on a 60 frame per second game. So when start, when it says start is called before the first frame update, it just means that start is called when you click play, right? Very start of the game before we start to move into our 60 frame per second update cycles. Um, so if I wanted code to execute when we start the game, I'd have to put it there. If I want code to execute every frame, right? So 60 times a second, then I'd put it in update, right? An update is the one we want to look at here. So we're going to do uh, what we're, we're going to do something interesting here is like we want to add behavior to this cube and we want to make it move around, right? So why don't we make it speed down the highway in this direction, right? Let's do that. So you'll notice that the blue here is actually corresponding to the Z axis, right? And um, because this is the blue part and this is the colorless part, you know, that's unity signaling that that way with the blue is positive and the colorless is negative. So positive Z is moving in this direction. So we wanna move our cube in the positive Z direction. Um, so let's do that. Earlier, we noted that there is a specific component that is contained by this cube called transform, right? Transform component. And this defines the behavior of where our cube is. What, where our cube is, it's rotation and it's scale, right? So we need to update the position using the transform component. If we do this once per frame, it will start to move, right? If we, if we move the position once per frame by a certain amount, then the cube will move fluidly, right? So let's do it. There's a function that lets us do this really easily and it's called translate. So we're gonna access the transform component, which we can access using um, just the word transform. And then we're gonna hit dot to signify that we're accessing one of transforms functions. And then we're gonna call it translate, right? We want to put some arguments here because we want to tell it where to translate it, like which direction. Um, for those confused by the scope of this, if you're familiar with programming, transform is just available as a child object um, from mono or as, as a parent uh, variable from mono behavior. And so we get it when we inherit mono behavior. And if that didn't make sense to you, don't worry. Okay, so we've got transform.translate, but we need to tell it which direction to translate in, right? Unity defines all three dimensional variables using a vector three object. And so that's how we're gonna interface with the unity translate function. We're gonna call, uh, or we're gonna create a new object and its type is gonna be vector three. We're gonna call it my direction vector. And we're gonna set it to a new vector three object. So this is just declaring a new vector three variable uh, and all vector three is, is three numbers, one, two, three. And those numbers in order represent X, Y, and Z in this case, right? X, Y, and Z being our axes in the game, right? So I've declared a new object, I'm gonna initialize it and I need to tell it which direction it's pointing in, right? So we wanna move in the positive Z direction we don't wanna move in the X direction and we don't wanna move in the Y direction. So we're gonna define it using zero in the X direction, zero in the Y direction, and let's pick a speed like 0 0.1. Oh, I moved my mouse. 0 0.1 in the Z direction. And I've put this F here because Unity, um, this, this in C sharp means I'm creating a float, which is a decimal point number. Um, as opposed to an illegal type for this 
um, for this industry in initialization. Don't get into the specifics of that. Just treat this as a number 0.1 because it is. Now we need to tell translate that we are using my direction vector, right? Um, and before we compile this and go through it, uh, I want to pull up some documentation just to show you guys where you can look if any of this coding stuff gets starts to get confusing. So if you go into Google, it's this simple, and you look up Unity, well, what are we working with? We're working with the transform component. We look up Unity transform, and you'll come up with Unity scripting API transform. So let's click that. And this is a really, really good set of documentation. It tells you all of, of the methods and variables and things you have access to with each component. Um, it's super good. Uh, and so all you have to do is scroll down to properties and you'll be able to see all these properties you have uh, and public methods. So we're gonna scroll down to the method that we're using, which is translate, right? Remember transform.translate. And this will tell us what our input needs to look like. So it's a public void translate and it takes an argument, which is a vector three called translation. Uh, and it says it moves in the transform in the direction and distance of translation. Cool, that's exactly what we want because we want to move the object in the direction of my direction vector, which is 0 0.1 units in the, Z, in the Z direction, positive, right? So that looks good. It looks like we're using the method already. I just wanted to pull that up to show you guys an example of how to read the documentation and how to understand uh, what methods to use. So, now that we've done this, uh, we're going to save our project. Um, you can hit Control S, or you can go File, or sorry, yeah, File Save. And that's really important. Unity won't pick up your script until you've saved, so you need to save your script before you go back into Unity. Now Unity's going to load for a second. I get the little spinning circle. It's going to think about it, um, check the script for errors, and then it's going to. Um, let me know. This is taking usual longer than usual. I don't know why it's still thinking about this. Um, but sometimes Unity catches errors in your scripts that um, make it not able to run. C compile it, compiler errors for those familiar. So now we go down. We've got our script attached. Um, we've edited the script so that it moves in the direction that we want it to, which is the Z direction. And that uh, that bit gets called once per frame or 60 times per second. So what do you think is going to happen when we click play? Any ideas? The cube is just going to start zooming in the positive V direction. Exactly. Yeah. So we'll see. And when we hit play, we see our cube is moving. And it's moving at quite a brisk pace, I would say. And you can, you can actually change that variable later to make it move faster or slower. Next week, we're going to look at how to how to use scripts more dynamically to let us edit the speed and the uh, the things like that from inside the editor without having to go back into our script. So we can just save it and forget it, and then edit some stuff within the Unity editor, editor which is very powerful. Um, are there any questions so far? I know scripting is sometimes hard for people. Um, coding is hard to learn if you're not familiar with it. So so that stuff is is totally like don't no stupid questions if you're confused about anything feel free to ask okay seems like there are no questions so let me just go over my list and make sure i covered everything um porting assets yep yeah looks like that's about all we had to do this week so if there are no questions, um, your homework assignment this week is to come up with your own Unity interface that you think will be helpful when you're working with the, with the editor and save it for, for later use. It's pretty simple. You don't have to do much. Just come up with your own interface and then save it, right? So you can move these windows around and figure it out and get something you like. Uh, and then you'll have uh, your own interface to work with next week. And I guess that was all I had to cover. I will stick around for a couple minutes if there's any questions, but I think that is it for now. Cool. I'm going to stop the recording.